Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. My guest today is Robert Clancy. Robert is a creative visionary, number one international best-selling author and spiritual teacher. At age 19, Robert had a divine spiritual encounter that altered his life in profound ways. In 2012, he created the Robert Clancy Guide to the Soul Facebook fan page, where he shares his inspirational thoughts now followed by by nearly 1 million people worldwide. He is a sought after speaker, presenter, and guest. He's also co-host and producer of the Mindset Reset TV show. Robert is also a regular contributor and weekly guest on Los Angeles KABC Radio's syndicated late night health radio show. His latest two books, The Messenger and Soul Ciphers, Decoding a Life of Hope and Happiness, both quickly became a number one international bestsellers upon their release. Welcome to the podcast, Robert. Well, thank you so much for having me here. It's awesome. And uh, truly, you know, enjoy our conversation, uh, our pre-interview, which was yesterday, and then uh, just looking forward to what unfolds today. Uh, yes. So uh, just introduce yourself. Start out by letting us know where you grew up how you got to be where you are today because i know you've been through quite a journey doing different things as well as this gift that that you're sharing with people yeah so i started you know basically i was in a a regular middle class family in suburbia in upstate new york and uh my father was a world war ii veteran and most people's grandfathers are my father was in world war ii i'm the baby of the family (laughs) and uh he um he was part of the d-day invasion and uh had liberated concentration camps and different things, um, taught me about leadership. My mother was a beautician and uh, I learned the most about them, believe it or not, at their wakes with all the people that they had touched in their lives. And this one woman came up to me during my mom's wake and said, you know, your mother, she always made me look beautiful, but more so she always made me feel beautiful. And my dad was all about leadership. And he said, one time he told me, you know, be a leader, not a follower. And he said, I've seen what bad leaders can do and where they can take people. And you need to be one of the good ones. So stuck with me all my life. And, you know, I kind of grew up there and met my uh, wife. And we founded our design firm in 1989. And we uh, celebrated 30 years of business. Mm-hmm. And, uh, amazing projects that we've done through that. We actually launched Guitar Hero and uh, did all the online branding for that um, websites. And uh, we've worked with Citigroup, um, Disney, uh, lots of um, 51C3s and organizations that help the community and and those types of things. And um, yeah, I had an amazing, loving childhood. I couldn't say, you know, it's just totally surrounded with love. It was, uh, you know, my mom especially was like my, she was the one that watched over me and my hero. And yeah. Wow. And so you tell me about this um, gift that you have. So you're, you're living your normal life, yeah. business, getting married, having kids, but there was a point where something special happened. Why don't you share that? Yeah. It was prior to the marriage and having our son, but, uh, yeah, I was a straight A student. I had everything going on and um, my whole life fell apart in about three months, two months period. There was a uh, best friend was killed in a horrible car accident. And another one was um, hit by a train. Um, this, uh, another, this girl that I knew, she, um, I was talking to them on 4th of July. I told them not to go out or something. I, I don't know if I had a premonition or what. And they were T-boned by a van that ran a red light and she was killed instantly that night. Um, then I had two friends commit suicide. Um, my parents were sort of having some struggles, but not not bad, but I just really couldn't go to them at the time. And, and all my good close friends were away at college. And then my girlfriend broke up with me and that pain, just all of it, all together. And I shut down and I just didn't want to feel anything anymore. So I started... Um, hiding because I was really good at masking things, but I was taking prescription drugs and alcohol and I would go to work and I just didn't want to feel, I didn't want to feel that grief because it was like a thousand knives sticking me through my soul. It just doubles you over in pain. You can't even function. Like it was just like waves and waves and waves all day long. It just wouldn't stop. 
And the only way I could dull it was by doing that. And um, it was a waitress in the restaurant I worked in. She, she was kind of spiritual. She was my uh, sage, you know, like one of those mentors that shows up in your life. And she said, come here. So at the end of the night, she said, put your hand out. So she made me put my left hand out like this. And she said, I know what you're doing and you need to stop or you're going to end up killing yourself. And she made me keep my hand out. She put this pamphlet in and it was on how to meditate. It was like prayerful meditation. And she said, this got me through some very difficult times in my life. And I want you to go home and do this tonight. And I want you to read this. She said, my mother died in my arms. I couldn't think of a worse thing to happen to someone. And it got me through that. So when I got home, I was pretty angry at God. And I had pretty much done other things. And, you know, I was really angry um, that all this happened. So I couldn't understand why a God would do that, you know, and take all these people and create all this pain. So I challenged him and I said, if you exist, I need to see something tonight. And if you exist, you need to heal me. And then I started the meditation. I was about three hours in and I saw this light flickering. So I opened my eyes and this light was shining on the wall. So I was like, well, this is a waste of time. And I got up to make the light stop by moving my curtain on my window. And um, I couldn't break the beam. It was like a laser pointer. And so I sat watching it like this. And I kept closing my eyes and opening them because I could see it either way. And it, over time, it just all of a sudden just unfolded like that. And this angel manifested in front of me that I could see with my eyes open or closed. I had enough time to study every bead on the dress and every feather. And it looked just like, you know, what you'd expect an angel to look like, uh, except she didn't have the harp. <laughs> <laughs> But her hands were out, you know, like this, facing me, and the wings, I mean, it was larger than a person. It was probably like seven feet, like just take a person and scale them up, and came nose to nose with me, and I could see it with my eyes open or closed. So I guess God answered the first question. Uh, I'm like, I need to see something. It's like, you see that now? You see me now? <laughs> it's like, I cannot see it. And, um, and then this light came on to me, and my whole body got warm, um, and then after a time, the angel touched me in the forehead with her index finger right on my mind's eye, like here. And um, I've been plugged into heaven. I live with that knowledge of what that kind of love is. And when you carry that in you, um, I was thinking about it. It's like my best friend passed away a couple of years ago, and I'm sort of jealous because he's on that side in that love right now. And I carry it in here and no one else. It's like you have music that no one can hear. <laughs> and so I wrote all these words that I'm trying to, you know, they're love and they're all stuck in my head. They're all stored as pictures. And I, I know I shared some with you, so I'll just do it now. It's like love has no walls, thus it cannot be conquered. Love has no boundaries, thus it is always open. And love has no limits, thus it has no end. If you reach with one hand, you may touch someone. If you reach with two, you may touch two. But when you reach with your heart, you'll touch everyone. They say peace of mind is a beautiful thing, but peace of heart allows you to see the beauty in everything. All hearts come in one size, large. Make sure yours is filled with love and compassion, and when it overflows with love and compassion, it may accidentally spill over onto others. And the last one I'll share is one of my favorites. It's, um, and it's a beautiful image that I see when I speak these words. <laughs> it's, um, of all the journeys of life, you'll encounter valleys of despair and mountains of hope. Just know that the heavens are above the valleys and the mountaintops touch them. To reach the summit of that mountain, take one hope-filled step past your fear, doubt, and worry. And that's it. It's just, um, I see all these. So every single word, visual, it's almost like God's math. And I woke up on 2012 on December 1st, and it was like this amazing clarity. And uh, that day also in our community, there was a horrible car accident that these teenagers were killed in by a drunk driver who was texting, speeding, drunk and high. I mean, can you do all of them wrong? And hit this car of these amazing, you know, kids that were, one was the football captain, they were just the ones that did all the good things. And, and um, the boy of one couple and the girl of the other couple were killed. 
And it was the same day that I woke up with that clarity. And I also knew that I'd meet those families and they eventually found me. And the mom of the girl that was killed, um, she said, messaged me on Facebook and said, you must be an incredibly beautiful person to share what you do. And she wanted my words to be on her daughter's headstone because I described her daughter's life in one sentence. And I couldn't think of a greater gift than to give these families that healing, but they gave me a gift too. And my words are carved in granite on this girl. And there's many, many people that visit that and they see those words. And it's, um, if you love with all your heart, life becomes one big smile. And so that's what happened to me. And then I'm a business person. I'm a programmer. And the other side, I kept this a secret for 30 years. I didn't tell even my parents until I told my dad in 2012 on Mother's Day when my mother died. That what happened to me, what I just said. And I decided I'm not living my truth. People need to know. And I can't take this to the grave. So I stepped into that room that day and decided I need to go public with this. And um, I don't care if people think I'm crazy because I know what I saw. So what did you do to go public? I started the Facebook page and I was actually, it was two years uh, past that. I was doing these posts and then people are going, oh my God, these words are, and I was getting them every day. I mean, sometimes up to 30 a day. And I would just write them down. I was just guided, share them around that, put it out there and whatever. And it's a page grew. And then one day I just came home. I sat in my backyard. I set up a camera and I told my story and I just put it up there. Nice. And what was the response? Beautiful. Just there's so many comments. There's like 4,000 plus comments on that post. Still going. <laughs> and Facebook makes a post like, disappear like a boat anchor um there's still people posting comments on that <laughs> it's kind of yeah that is amazing and um i think i read it earlier you have like a, a million likes on your facebook page yeah i've actually had some posts uh the simplest post i've ever written was shared by nearly one million people it went like super viral um uh, but it was uh Love is a simple word, yet it simply means everything. That says it all. It, it does. And you get downloads of this, these words, this wisdom. And anytime I want to <laughs> I can just look at a flower and then I'll, I'll read a quote, and like 10 more will come out of it. It's like they branch off and I'm, I don't even know what to do with all of it. So I just post them and make, make memes. I just put them out there. And if one person reads it or if one billion people read it, I've done my job it doesn't matter it's not about numbers and ego and mm -hmm. it's about who needs to read that for that day and I get messages not from people that this touched my life I get messages from people that what you wrote saved my life because I was planning on committing suicide today and I changed my mind after I saw what you wrote that is just uh just just in awe because if you think about all the people who think about that or get into that point of depression right where they're that sad and um what kind of advice do you give people let's say they got to the point where you did where you were like so depressed what what do you tell them well i've been on rock bottom there's two things there the bottom and when you look up the way out and as bad as things seem right now they're never that bad. And I, I had a conversation with you about this uh, offline and I'll share it. It's, there are opposites in the world. There's hot and cold and there's night and day and female and male and you go on and on and on. Light and dark do not work that way. They seem like they do. But I told you that when you add darkness together, nothing changes. When you add light together, it gets brighter. When you add light to darkness, it ceases to exist. It loses immediately, even with the simplest little tiny spark in there. 
That's what hope is. And when you hold hope, and an interesting thing about faith, hope, and love, they simply don't exist unless you believe in them. That's how they're created. Faith is simply having that belief. Hope is the belief that it's there. And love is what comes out of that belief. And they're the three pillars of everything in life. And no matter how dark things get or how murky it is, I've seen it go. And I've gone through some pretty tough times, even since the angel. It's not like, you know, I'm walking on potpourri here for the rest of my life. I still have to climb the mountain. I still have to do those things that everyone has to do, that you have to do. It's just to accept that challenge and know that you're held. And when you slip, there's a hand there that's always going to pull you up. You have to take the action to reach for it. And that's called surrender. When you surrender, it all unfolds. And all of a sudden, everything just falls into place. No matter how bad or how good, all the puzzle pieces fit together. And the words are, we never see the great picture God paints for us because we're always standing upon the canvas. And although sometimes the image around us seems dark and unclear or scary or murky, that when you pull back, it's just a beautiful picture. And the only thing that you can ever change about that is how you frame it and how, and if you've been to museums, sometimes the frame is worth more and is more beautiful than the painting itself. And that's your perspective. That's how you take in these things and how you approach it and look at, when you pull back to the thousand foot view, it's not that bad. So when you think about that hole that I talked about, you know, if you think rock bottom, I always think like you're in a pit. Mm -hmm. And if you climb out of the pit, you're standing at the edge of it and there might be a forest around you. And it's like, that's scary because now I got to go through this dark forest. I don't know where it is. And eventually you get through the forest and then you can climb. Maybe there's a mountain and you get to the top of the mountain and you got these incredible views. But when you're on top of the mountain, you don't even see the hole anymore. And you just see how beautiful that valley in the forest really is it's never that bad mm. and you don't stay at the peak long because that's not good either and you have to get back down so life is a series of when you hit those peaks take in the view and when you're at the bottom trust that the image is beautiful when you get back up there <laughs> exactly and when you were talking about reach, it reminds me that, you know, when people give up, it's because they think they can't reach anymore. Right. So if we know there's that one little piece of light, that little glitter of light that we can reach up into it, then we can have some hope and, right. and, and pull ourselves out. And also to recognize that when you see somebody going through something, I'm a martial artist. I got my sixth degree black belt. I got my fourth degree in Taekwondo, six in combat Aikido and Chun Tu Kwan Aikido. Uh, I've learned something about the energy. So when we neutralize an attack that's coming, force is coming out, I join the force and redirect it. The other part is that um, in order to get the attacker away from you, we create pain and go into that. So when somebody's swinging a stick at you, a big baseball bat, you tend to back up and get away from it. Mm -hmm. But in order to survive it, you need to go in because at the handle, there's no momentum there. The worst part of it is at the tip of the bat. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is suffering and in grief, what do we do? We repel, but we really need to go in. So talk more about that. So if someone's in that grief, you're talking about just going deeper into that. It's to just lend them an ear sometimes or just let them know you're there. Cause most people are, you know, think about it. If you've ever had a friend and their child died, it's really difficult and they're broken. And what do you want to do? It's like, Hey, sorry. You know, you don't have words. You're like, I'm really sorry about that. And you just, and then every time you see them, they're like, uh, I, yeah. And you know what they want? They want you just to recognize that they're still there and that they want to celebrate that life. And they, want, they don't want their child to be forgotten. And you doing that is kind of forgetting them. Yes. 
and and yeah and a lot of times we don't have those words we we there 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 really isn't words um, and you don't need them <laughs> but, you sometimes know. it's just to go i'm there yeah just be there and for I, my heart's yours that's it that's all they need to know yeah sometimes that's enough <laughs> that, that's true i i know when i lost someone all I really wanted was to, for people to know that there was someone really special to me and they're yeah. not here anymore. Right. Oops. But they are. <laughs> but they are. <laughs> so the science, now, now I've got to put on, you know, I've got my uh, analytical, I actually got a hundred on a logic exam. So that's how logical I am. And then I have this divine experience. I'm like, yeah, thank you, God. Thanks for that. Because I was really set with the whole science part of life. And then you go and do that. So now I've got both and I'm fighting myself, you know? So yeah, it's, if you think about it, all the elements in the universe have always been here and always will be here. We're part of that. Everything that you are is created from that. It does not get destroyed. You can burn a piece of paper. Is the paper gone? No, it's just been transformed into gas, this and molecules and other things, but it still exists. It's never gone. There's no way to physically make it completely disappear. That's so true. there's no way to make you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That is so true. That's basic science. We learned in what second grade or something. I, so I, I be... was paying attention in science. Yeah, class. <laughs> can't be destroyed. Oh, no. it's always correct. Here. Right. So we're part of that. So if you take it from that side, scientifically, it makes sense. So your soul, for instance, is in your. You're not a human with a soul. Your soul surrounded in your humanity. We're soul first. Now you got this cool thing where you can actually walk around and do things and make choices and, and go, I wonder what happens if I stick my hand in that burner. Whoa, that's hot. <laughs> and you got, I got burned, people. Look at this. And you're going, why? Well, that's life. And uh, if you don't go through that, you're not going to understand like, yeah, I shouldn't do that again. <laughs> <It's> bad. <laughs> and you go through the pain and you feel things. and the greatest part of being human is, is feeling everything and all of it, the good, the bad, the, the joy, the jealousy, the, <laughs> all of it, because that's being human. So just come in and feel it fully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then laugh. I find that sometimes in the worst situations, like I had my, my best friend, known since second grade, passed away. I held his hand in his head just shortly before he, he crossed over. And I said the most beautiful things. He couldn't talk anymore. He lost his ability to speak. And I told him everything. And I whispered to him and I let him go. And I told him it's time, you can go. My other friend is a huge Steelers fan. Now this kid from second grade, and I've known him since nursery school, has always been a steal. I think he was born a steal. I think he came out with Steelers gear on because he had black and gold sneakers, the lunchbox, the thermos, the the um, parka, the, <laughs> the, you know, the rain gear, that winter hat, the gloves, and he still does. So we're at the funeral and it's in January and we're in Philadelphia and uh, he's standing at the grave site and I look over at him and he literally folds over crying, doubles over in pain crying at the gravesite just all of a sudden all at once it hit him and our friend was really tall and i know our other friend would have the one that was in the casket <laughs> but still around us i walked over to him and i said do you know if jeff's standing right here and he's saying you know this is my funeral and you couldn't leave that damn Steelers hat home today <laughs> And he started laughing and crying at the same time in that. So, you know, you got to just, and he went, he's, he looks up, he goes, you're right. <laughs> that is awesome. So, you know, you can have those moments and enjoy 
Um, and he would have said that to him if we were at someone else's funeral. He going, seriously, you couldn't like not have it today. Just once. <laughs> Wow. Um, you have such a, you know, just a natural compassion for people and, you know, I can tell that you can just feel their hearts. Did that just come naturally or did you learn that? I've always believed in love. It was probably my first, uh, it's actually my very first memory before I could even speak. I knew what love was. And so I always looked at that way, but the compassion, it's not having, um, like uh, where you feel bad for somebody. It's you feel good that they're going through something and that they're gonna get through it and you can be there to help them. And mm -hmm. hopefully they're there for you when you need it and they are. And there's also um, the hand of God, which you know I, I avoided talking about religion all my life and now I'm that guy because I had, it's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, thanks for that. Um, but yeah, the compassion is just understanding and trying to understand the human condition and that it doesn't matter what status you are in life, how much money you have, it doesn't make you happy. What makes you happy is knowing that there's somebody there that cares. And the number one person that should care is you. You should first care about yourself. You care and love yourself because if you can do that, you can bring that to others in the world and go through and it's really the in to the out of how it works because how can you expect somebody to love you if you don't love yourself mm. and how can you have compassion for others unless you have compassion for your own self and how you go through and i've had like i said you know it's it's ups and downs and challenges and then you have to get perspective and yeah emotions can really mess you up because <laughs> you know it's delusional like with system overload and it happens to everybody including this guy <laughs> and i know there's angels and stuff so i'm just like okay uh i gotta get myself back in me because uh, i'm really messed up today <laughs> emotionally well it's just part of the human experience like you said right so how is it walking around knowing how heaven is you you did mention to me um I think when we talked earlier that you know you've had some near-death experiences so you you have you've had a glimpse or you know how heaven is and there's been other people with that same situation how is it walking around knowing how that is but living in this body being on this earth yeah it's a difficult question it's like uh I just understand that love and I just throw it into volunteer work and different things that I do. It's, um, it's not that I know every piece of it, but I just, I had, it was infused in me, the memory of it. So it's like, I got the echoes of that because there is no way to even understand it here. It's like your circuits, uh, you, your computer can't run that, that code. Mm -hmm. So I have just like, okay, we're gonna give you a little piece that you can sit, and we don't want your circuits to blow up, but <laughs> I just kind of look at it a programmer and I'm like, okay, so that's, that's system overload stuff right there. Um, and where I see it is in every little act of kindness. Every time that I see like a child smile, I see an elderly couple holding hands or something, or just the beauty in nature that's around us. Um, I look at those things and I see, I see God's math and I see it's there. It's everything in this plane. And it's the simple things that you find it in. It's not this whole big giant. It's the simple. That's the whole point. It's not complex. It's on a whole simple formula. And that's where that heavenly love is. And I didn't have a near death experience, but I had a rebirth experience. <laughs> you almost like, like, in some way because it's like my entire soul was rebooted when I was touched. It was just completely wiped in. I try to explain you know, in a funny way. It's uh, if you see the movie Hot Tub Time Machine, so you got, they get in a hot tub and they go back in time to their former selves in the eighties, uh -huh. but they're in present day, except that they're in their body as a 19 year old and they're an adult. So they have all this knowledge and they're running around like, Oh my God, like, and everybody sees them as the kid, but they're, 
that's what happened to me. I looked in the mirror that day and there's a 19 year old reflecting back at me with the knowledge of somebody my age that's had all these life experiences already and all of them all the way to the end, all at once. Wow, that's just even hard so, to imagine. <laughs> I just walked out of there going, oh my God, I'm like, you know, uh, I have all this knowledge and I know, and I'm only 19 and I know how long I'm going to live. And it's going to be a long time that I'm going to have to go and do this. And, you know, most people don't even know, but I'm like, I'm 54 this year and 55 coming up. And, uh, and, and I've been volunteering for 30 years and they're looking at me like, I thought you were like 35 or maybe 40. <laughs> I'm like, no, I think I'm de-aging or something because I feel like a 25 year old and I'm like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm really happy and uh, physically feel great. I'm in just ready to, I mean, I'm still doing martial arts and I can, I swim laps every morning. I'm just like, whatever, I can just have fun. But the, um, it's really, interesting journey to, to have the knowledge or the echoes of that and I just want the only thing you know it's like this longing that I wish everyone on this planet would have that experience that I had yeah that'd be awesome because the world would be a different place because then you would know for sure that you're okay mm -hmm. I don't, from that moment on having feared death in fact it's almost like I want to celebrate when that happens. It's like when I'm on my deathbed, they're like, I'm going to the party finally. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, you guys have fun. I'll see you over there. It's all good. And no regrets. It's all, you know, it's kind of like that. And I just walk in and go, if I'm due tomorrow, fine. If I'm due 50 years from now, <laughs> whatever I mm -hmm. It's fine. I'll just take it as it comes. <laughs> wow. So what, at this point in your life, what gives you the most happiness, fulfillment? Right now, it's, it's the unknown. Just sitting here, my wife said something to me the other day. I said, you know, it's like, almost like fear, like what's tomorrow or where am I going to be? And she said, but isn't every day like that? And shouldn't you just accept like and just fall into it and i said you know i never know where or what and just um that's the part that's really joyous is just the let it i don't push anything i don't pick up you know i don't force anything to happen because you sit there and you're like i want to get that i want i'm going to get in there i'm going to try to make that call and I'm, this is going to happen and i just set the intention and just let it you know, it's going to unfold. You still have to have action because the car still needs to drive. I just set the GPS, the coordinate, let the car go, but somebody has to get in it. Okay. That's you. Yeah. So you have to have some type of action, but don't force it. You don't force the car just because the GPS says, hey, the best way to go to right around track, traffic's this way and you ignore that and go into, I'm going to push through that. Usually it doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. And I had a teacher that once said, all the opportunity is in the unknown. That's where all, all the opportunity <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> so yeah, just dive in. <laughs> yeah, and the other is, is working with Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership because I volunteered with them and it's high school sophomores and they have this amazing, beautiful weekend. Mm -hmm. It's Hobie, H-O-B-Y dot org is the organization. Uh -huh. And um, I volunteered for that for 30 years and it creates this incredible weekend for these high school students they go out and then they just create light in the world they're just they go out energized to create change and make positive things happen and volunteer and and hug people and just you know it's like they just explode with enthusiasm and i get this like infused in me every year for four days out of the year and then i see them maybe at a couple of alumni events and volunteer work that we do and they're always smiling Every one of them is smiling. I mean, what a beautiful thing, like to be surrounded by that. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is beautiful. And, you know, young enthusiasm and zest for life. Yeah. So but you, you can you never, and we have every age group volunteers with this on the committees and in the staff. Like we have people.
people all the way up 60s, 70s to high school students. And they're all on the same plane, same level, all treating each other in the same way. It's a beautiful thing. It's not just, yeah. Sounds <laughs> really beautiful. So we said Hobie, H O B Y organization. And they have cheers that. They go H O B Y. So there's like all <laughs> cheers that happen too. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today yeah. and for sharing all your light and wisdom. And um, it's just amazing. The words are just, your words are living. They're living and they give life and, and, and they give hope and they give healing. And it's just, just listening to them is just amazing and wonderful. So thank well, you. Well, you're so a beautiful much. soul too. And you help people with their vision in many different levels. So uh, I know you're an optometrist or you work in that field, but you're also enlightening people by opening their eyes and their hearts. So you see more with your heart than you'll ever see with your eyes. I, I, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, so thanks. any last words of wisdom before we end? Uh, just, um, I would say, go out and share a smile and start by sharing the smile with yourself before you bring it out. Because it's just uh, every day, no matter how bad my days are sometimes, I've never woken or made it through one of my days since I was touched without at least smiling once. Beautiful. So thank you so much and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.